So with all this quarantine going on, being stuck inside, I realized, man, I miss driving. And then I remember one of those incidents with my dad and driving. And now I'm going to relay this to you in the most fun manner I can. It's time for a smooth transition into the story. The smooth, like sandpaper. So the year is 2010, South Africa, Mzansi is hosting the FIFA World Cup and as such everyone's given two months off to enjoy the tournament and support the boys. Bafana Bafana, as that one commentator said, Bafana Bafana. <laughs> uh, we were all enjoying the free time and the chance to watch soccer. Mm -hmm. So before the tournament actually started, my dad had like a few days off. So what does he do? He says, hey, let's go watch some FIFA, some old FIFA video tapes thing. I think they were documentaries. Yeah, they were FIFA documentaries. And he's like, to get into the mood, let's watch these documentaries. So it's me, my cousin, and my dad. We're all watching these specials. We're like, we're in like three hours deep. Then all of a sudden, my dad starts up from his chair and declares in his best voice ever <clears throat> a man cannot just sit back and support his country on such a television S this standard television no a situation as such requires the highest of definitions one of the flattest screens the time is nigh my son will you join me in this most noble of journeys and I said to do what he said we're gonna go pick up a television at your aunt's place. Why didn't you get it delivered? You think I'm gonna pay that much money to get it delivered? No, I'm gonna go get it. Besides, it's a good opportunity to leave the house. It's boring here about the soccer. So, in the spur of the moment, he legit grabs the keys five minutes later, gets to the car, and he says, let's go. So now my cousin, my dad, and I are in his 2004 diesel engine Fort Ranger nicknamed Chuck Norris I'll get into a story about why it's called Chuck Norris later but not today so the plan was sounded simple just go get the TV here's the thing my aunt doesn't live in town or the next town over we had to go from home base Mafi King to 316 kilometer away Olifant's Fontaine for a television so now I understand why he's like, I'm not paying for shipping costs. These people are insane. So we're in the car. We head out of town and we're going to go get the television. We are driving there, driving. And then when we get there, because we got there so late, we had to stay the night over. And then the next day, we took the television and loaded it into the back seat. We're not putting in the buggy because there was no way to tie it down. The flat screen. Yeah. Anyway. So as such, we have, me and my cousin have to sit in the front seat. But luckily for us, I'm 10 and he's 12 and we're prepubescently -pu -pre skinny. Thank you, I guess. Anyway, so on the road there, we get onto the highway, we're driving. And for those who have their license, you know that, that, that rule where if someone's moving faster than you are, you just drive to the shoulder of the road and let them pass you. And then as a gratitude, the passer hits the hazards and then they flash you for like a good three. And then they switch off in a way of saying, thank you for letting me through. And then if you want to, you just flash your floodlights and go like, oh, you're welcome. So we're doing that for like a good two hours or so, just driving, driving. So we're the ones that are just passing by everyone flying at ludicrous speed. But within the speed limit, within the speed limit until a 2005 Ford Focus ST with tinted windows so then he comes at us like a bat out of hell we move over and then he drives past and then my cousin and I are waiting for the hazards he doesn't flash them such insolence and I looked at my dad and said this rude mother so my dad steps on the accelerator but before we can close the gap he gets off the highway and he has to go somewhere else. I'm like, oh, you lucky little. And so it's fine. We're carrying on. So now we're just driving and then we get to a small town. This is the last little town before we actually get home. So now we're just driving to town, not making any stops. And then we get to like a robot. 
And what do we see parked right next to us? Oh, that's right. The Speed Lords have delivered our champion the Ford Focus that we wanted to take down. My dad looks over to that guy and we can only assume that guy looks back at us and then my dad just revs the engine and then that guy revs his engine and now ladies and gentlemen in the words of the great Bruce and now it's time boss oh my word you may have paid for the whole seat but you're only gonna need the edge. We're on a double carriageway and as we leave town and that sign that says 120 speed limit shows up, we all start flying. Race starts, the Ford Focus peels off because it has a higher acceleration and we're trying to dog it down, but now it's slowly opening the gap. I see, I see like, you know when a car's moving fast enough that when they change gears, you can see the car just Shift a bit. Yeah, I see this guy violently shifting gears. Count up. He's at two, three, four, five. And now he's peeling away. And I'm looking at my dad. I'm listening to the engine. The engine, the engine is hauling. It's like, please change up. But my dad's not changing up. I look at my dad. I say, why aren't you changing up? And then just before I get an, a verbal answer, I just hear that infamous sound from this car it has a turbo the turbo kicked in we're flying now my dad switches up we're closing the gap power power the race is back on ladies and gentlemen we're flying we're catching up and now we're neck and neck I look over to my dad my dad's steely eyed gaze through the, the windshield. He's not looking at the road. He's looking at his opponent's loss. He's looking at his victory. And now I glance over the speedo and we're at 120. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. By the way, the top speed for our car was 180. But as responsible citizens, we're like, no, no, no. This race continues at 120, you know? You can't see me, but I just wink. And the other guy, after the race, I actually searched this up. Their top speed was 200. But anyway, with that turbo, we're not gonna lose any time soon. So we're dogging down the road, going at it, going, going, going. And then I look over, the focus is starting to pull away. Oh my, no. no, this can't be. We're losing. We can't lose. We're the best. And then look again at the speedo. And I'm like, wait a second, why are we slowing down? And then am I confusing? I look at my dad and I say, Father, why are we decelerating? Why, why are you giving up? Are you giving up, Father? Don't give up, this beast can carry on. We can clearly dust this fool. And my dad looks over to me in his most Mufasa-ish fashion and says to me, My son, as the tortoise beat the hare, so does the slow beat the fast. And I look at him and I say, what the hogwash are you spitting? And he just points forward. And when I look, I go, oh, it's the cops. They're in a speed trap. They catch him at that high speed. <laughs> oh, shit. oh, and then he has to pull over. But not before they give that verbal, that, that audible that audible get over here they flash 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 the lights and then they go whoop whoop <laughs> so then he pulls over to the side and now we have to drive past him and to add insult to injury for all those who know me i would do this again i just lean over to the hazards and then i press it oh and then we just drive off oh i'm pretty sure that person hates me now but I'm like, <laughs> race smart, not hard, boy. So we get home, we deliver the television, and we never speak a word of this to my mom at all. At that moment, I learned a very important lesson. That guy may have messed with the rest, but he was yet to witness the best make a mess. And we did make a mess. I think, what was it? Speeding is like 
what was it a thousand and then they add like a couple hundred every 10 kilometers you're over the speed limit <laughs> pretty sure he was pulling a solid 180 no i don't think we were pulling 180. i mean no we were all pulling 120 he just pulled 125 yeah uh-huh. but yeah that was one of the races i've enjoyed with my dad 10 out of 10 would do again hey but if you like the story please like comment i'd like to hear if you guys have any of these fun stories share this thing to the moon and subscribe subscribe and hit that subscribe button okay and get some notifications going sorry i was i haven't uploaded for like a while now had to sort out the thing with the whole quarantine in the gene but now we're trying to get a really solid schedule and by me i mean my mic my laptop and my memory yeah see you guys in the next video speed rules <laughs>